Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a stock that is really popular in the market and they've actually been doing really good over the last year. And that stock is McDonald's. And we can see that over the last year, McDonald's is completely outperforming the market. They're up around 16% in the same time period that the S&P 500 is down around 10%. So they are completely outperforming the market at the moment. And over the five-year chart, they're up 66%, while the rest of the market is only up around 40%. So they're beating the market in the one-year chart and the five-year chart. And so in this video, I'm just going to look into some of the recent news that's come out surrounding McDonald's. And then I'm also going to figure out the intrinsic value per share for this company using a discounted cash flow model to figure out if it presents a good buying opportunity at the current share price. And so first and foremost, we can see that from this article right here, they point out that in inflationary environments like the one we are living in right now, fast food restaurants actually end up winning against all of their competitors. Chains like Chipotle Mexican Grill and Chili's are struggling to attract customers, but fast food chains are not having the same issue. McDonald's and Yum Brands, Yum Brands obviously owns companies like KFC and Taco Bell, these companies have reported solid US, United States demand in this inflationary environment. And then other companies like Red Lobster and Applebee's are trying to spend more money on advertising and also with deep discounts to try to attract customers. If I scroll down here, they point out that inflation weary customers pulled back on their restaurant spending during the holiday season. And they also pulled back on their spending at retailers, but they ended up spending more money at fast food chains which actually do better during times of economic uncertainty and economic downturns <clears throat> mcdonald's in particular reported u.s same store sales increased by 10.3 percent recently which was helped in part by the fact that low-income consumers kept on returning more frequently to their fast food chains during the prior two quarters and on top of that their rival yum brands reported that their Taco Bell domestic same store sales increased 11%. Lastly, just to point out real quick here, they pointed out that Chipotle ended up not really producing revenue or earnings growth that met Wall Street's estimates. And they ended up blaming it on other stuff like the bad weather or underperforming launch of one of their menu items. So it's kind of difficult to tell what is really ailing Chipotle and Chili's and other companies like that. But obviously these fast food chains like Yum Brands and McDonald's are doing quite well during the current economic uncertainty and the current recession and inflationary time periods. Also, we can see right here from this article, McDonald's recently announced a collaboration with Cardi B and Offset. And a lot of franchisees really did not like this marketing strategy from McDonald's. They pointed out that due to the couple's lifestyle and lyrics, as well as their image, it didn't really support McDonald's family-friendly vibes. And then on top of that, they also point out in this article that this new collaboration with Cardi B and Offset was part of their star-powered collaboration, which started in 2020 with Travis Scott. And that was the first celebrity to be featured on their menu in 30 years, the last one being Michael Jordan in 1992. And these collaborations, according to McDonald's, have increased the company's earnings and generated a lot of excitement and brand interest among consumers. And so even though, according to surveys, 65%, which is a pretty big statistic, of US franchisees didn't support the Travis Scott collaboration when it was announced, it ended up helping the company to drive more online orders and app downloads. So a lot of franchisees are not too happy about these collaborations, but they are pretty good for business from McDonald's executive perspective. And the last article I wanted to look at had something to do with AI and machine learning. As I point out right here, a lot of people are scared. A lot of minimum wage workers are scared that artificial intelligence is going to replace human jobs. But as this article pointed out, there were some testings of AI in drive through settings at McDonald's. And some, course, some customers, when they tried to order something, the robot ended up replacing their Diet Coke order with nine sweet teas. And a lot of other customers were having a lot of issues. Some were reportedly getting meals worth $300. 
and trying to tell the robot to stop adding more meals didn't work. So obviously the CEO pointed out right here that the ideas of robots and all those things, while it may be great for gathering headlines or garnering headlines, it's not practical in the majority of restaurants, said the CEO. And also really one of the only successful implementations of automation in McDonald's was, was um, in South Africa with self-serving kiosks where customers could have placed orders without having to wait for waiters or cashiers. So AI could be implemented in the future, but as of today, it looks to be a little spotty. And so now I wanna look at their financial statements. We can see this is their income statements comparing 2020, 2021, and 2022. We can see that total revenues are down very slightly from 23.2 billion to $23.1 billion. So that's a very small decrease there. And then we can also see in terms of net income, net income is down from $7.5 billion to $6.1 billion year over year. So even though their stock performance has been performing really well over the last year, we can see according to their financial statements, their revenues and their earnings have actually decreased year over year. And then right here we can see their balance sheet. It's a pretty unique balance sheet. We usually don't see balance sheets like this, but we can see total assets came out to be around 50 billion down from 53 billion. And if we scroll down here, we can see that the company actually has negative shareholders equity of negative $6 billion. And so what that means is the company actually has more liabilities or debt on their balance sheet than they do total assets. And that ends up, you know, putting their total liabilities and shareholders equity equal to their total assets. They have probably around $56 billion worth of total liabilities and as a result they have a negative shareholders equity position uh, equity position of negative six billion dollars and lastly right here for their cash flow statement we can see they reported operating cash flow of around 7.3 billion dollars in 2022 and then they also paid out dividends of around 4.1 billion dollars in 2022 and then made treasury stock purchases of 3.8 billion dollars so returning value back to shareholders does seem to be one of their main priorities, as we can see from this cash flow statement. And so now we can see this is a discounted cash flow model to figure out the intrinsic value per share for McDonald's. Yahoo Finance is estimating that the company is going to grow at around 7.3% for the next five years. So I cut that in half to be a little bit more conservative for the next five years after that. They had around $5 billion of free cash flow in their most recent full year around a net debt position of $46 billion after subtracting the cash on their balance sheet. And they had around 731 million shares outstanding. And so that puts their estimated intrinsic value per share at $39 per share, which compared to their current share price means they are definitely not trading below their estimated intrinsic value per share. And a lot of that has to come from the fact that on their balance sheet, they have a lot more debt than they have cash. And so that ends up really skewing the discounted cash flow model based on their projected free cash flows here, because you would have to get all of this debt off of their balance sheet first with this free cash flow. And then after you got all of the debt off that balance sheet, you could add up that free cash flow and that would give you the intrinsic value per share once you divided it by the shares outstanding. All that debt on their balance sheet really ends up weighing their intrinsic value per share down here. And so that's why they're currently estimated to be trading above their estimated intrinsic value per share based on these Yahoo Finance projections. And so right here on the right hand side, I did a competitor analysis comparing them to their competitors, Chipotle and Yum Brands in terms of financial ratios. We can see that in comparison for profit margins, McDonald's has the highest gross and net profit margins here, beating out Chipotle and you know, Taco Bell and KFC and all those other fast food companies. But Yum Brands has a higher return on assets at 22% compared to Chipotle and McDonald's 11%. McDonald's has a middling of the pack price to earnings ratio of 32 times earnings. And they also pay out the highest dividend at $5.66 per share. Chipotle doesn't pay out a dividend and Yum Brands only pays out a $2 dividend per share. So from a competitor analysis perspective, it looks like McDonald's would be a pretty good buy from a profit margin and dividend perspective. If you, if you wanted to go for return on assets and price to earnings ratio, looks like you'd probably want to go for Yum Brands. And then all across the board, it looks like Chipotle is really not that competitive right now in comparison to 
McDonald's and Yum Brands. And so lastly, I wanted to compare them to some of the other companies we've looked at in past videos. In terms of share price compared to intrinsic value, McDonald's was obviously trading way above their estimated intrinsic value per share, came out to be around $39 per share, and they're currently trading at $262 per share. So that means they're trading at more than six times their intrinsic value per share at the moment. 3M is doing the worst on this list, trading at 2.38 times their intrinsic value. And General Electric and Albertsons are still the only two companies on our list to be trading below intrinsic value per share. In terms of growth rate, we can see that McDonald's comes in 10th place with a 7.3% estimated growth rate here for the next five years compounded annually. General Electric is the highest at 44% with Tesla coming in second place at 18%. In terms of profitability ratios, we can see McDonald's does get on the board here, actually beating out a lot of the other competitors or a lot of the other companies we've looked at in past videos. They had a 56.43% gross profit margin and a 26% net profit margin. So they're right behind Johnson & Johnson in gross profit and right behind Adobe in net profit. Adobe still holds the number one spot in terms of gross profit. Nobody has been able to knock Adobe off of the number one spot. And then Microsoft is holding the number one spot for net profitability. And then also in terms of stock performance, we saw that over the five-year chart, McDonald's has actually been doing extremely well. They're up 66%, beating out the rest of the market here. And in terms of comparing them to the other companies we've looked at, they're not doing too bad. They're not doing as good as Accenture, Nike, and Adobe. And then Microsoft and Tesla are obviously in a league of their own, especially Tesla with their 733% return over the last five years. Lockheed Martin producing the worst return over the last over these 10 companies with a 33% return. So based on this, in terms of comparing them to the other companies we've looked at, it looks like McDonald's is actually pretty good. They have a really good return, beating out the rest of the market. Not as good as Tesla's, but it is better than the S&P 500. They're doing really good in terms of profitability in terms of growth rate, they're not really doing that good in comparison to the other companies, and they're definitely not trading below intrinsic value per share at the moment. And then in terms of competitor analysis, it looks like they are very competitive. They have the best profitability ratios in this fast food industry, and they also pay out the best dividend per share. So in terms of whether or not McDonald's is a good buying opportunity at the current share price, it's tough to say. Obviously, we saw from the discounted cash flow model that because of the large debt position they have on their balance sheet, the estimated intrinsic value per share comes out to be very low because of the fact that their free cash flows just don't grow fast enough to justify the amount of debt on their balance sheet at the current share price. But that being said, it doesn't necessarily mean that McDonald's is a bad investment because there are other parameters to look at and other variables at play here. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about whether or not McDonald's is a good buying price at the current share price. Leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see everyone in the next one.